Spiritual Teaching 257 Love Each Other 1. In silence you have remained, thoughts rise to my spirit. 2. Be welcome, you seek rest, peace or consolation and you have succeeded in coming to listen to me, because I am the one who possesses everything you need. 3. If you are looking for the essence of the word of Jesus, truly I tell you, you will also find it. 4. The word of Jesus was the voice of the divine word. Jesus was the name of the body of Christ, a body that was like a temple to house my spirit and manifest the truth in my words. 5. But if you believe in me, if you love me and follow me, it does not matter what name you give me, among the many you have to designate me. The essential thing is that you feel me, although I do not come to demand that you do them with all perfection. 6. Blessed is he who feels me in his own being to the extent that his spiritual capacity allows it. 7. In some their heart beats with force, others want to tell me something and are not able to form a thought. Others experience the urge to cry and let their eyes overflow, and there are those who are filled with fear because they know that a penetrating gaze contemplates them. 8. Those who prepare and manage to feel my presence are the ones who truly come to the spiritual table to eat of the bread of grace. They are the spirits that, from lesson to lesson, will one day reach beyond the mind, to penetrate the meaning of my word and find its content there. 9. These will be the ones who give themselves to the practice of charity, the peacemakers because having found the source of peace, they will suffer contemplating those who live in the midst of discord and war, which is true darkness for the spirit. They will be those who live to comfort, to comfort, to illuminate the darkened minds, to heal the sick in body or spirit. 10. Only those who feel my presence, those who interpret in their spirit the essence and love of my word, will be able later clothe yourself with pity before those who suffer and also feel the pain, the nakedness, the poverty and the tragedies of men. 11. If I have invited all of you to my table and I have asked you to prepare yourselves so that you spiritually enjoy my presence, it means that all of you are destined to delight yourselves with the delicacies of the kingdom of heaven. But at the same time, you all have the mission of sowing love in the fields where discord grew and filling with light every place where you have gone to hide vice, misery, and ignorance. 12. This lesson gives you he who, because he felt an infinite love for you, left everything to save you from your darkness, although for this he had to become a man, live persecuted and mocked until he died on a cross. 13. Disciples, before you take your first step in the world, I know in advance your life, works and thoughts, so I give you how much you will need in the journey that you are going to undertake. 14. The spirit begins a trial stage through its body. But he already knows he has enlightened before and has been strengthened not to be misled by the temptations that the world presents him. 15. Sometimes it corresponds to him to dwell in a being whose heart contains great rebellion and then it seems difficult to manifest your light. That heart will be your crucible and your test in life and if you manage to subdue and persuade your heart that only being in harmony can matter and spirit man find peace, he will have triumphed in his test and will be able to aspire to a higher world. 16. If the heart is weak before the sufferings and vicissitudes of life and becomes blasphemous, it is because the spirit was dominated by sufferings, is that he descended to the scale of matter and made all the miseries and trifles that did not correspond to him. He who reflects on time, prays and strengthens in faith, will be able to succeed and from that test the fruit of the experience will remain so as not to falter or weaken again. Instead, the one who for a moment forgets his essence and dedicates himself to living and suffering for the world, he will have fallen, defeated by the force of matter, by the needs, temptations and small things of human life. 17. Ah, uh, yes, from your first steps on earth, you will hear a doctrine on the lips of your parents wise, fortifying and comforting, how much this would help the spirit to guide the mind and heart in their elevation towards your God. 18. A great spiritual teaching is required for man to walk according to the voice of his conscience, because the matter that surrounds him in the world despite being all saturated with divine love, wisely made for the good and for the happiness of man, it constitutes a test for the spirit, from the moment it comes to inhabit a world to which he does not belong, united with a body whose nature is different from his own. 19. 
There you can find the reason why the spirit forgets its past. From the moment you incarnate in an unconscious creature, newly born and merging into it, begins a life together with that being. Of the spirit only two attributes remain present. Consciousness and intuition, but personality, works done and the past, are temporarily hidden. It has been so arranged by the Father. What would become of? The spirit that has come from the light of a high abode to live among the miseries of this world. If he remembered his past? And how many vanities would there be among men when revealed to you the greatness that in another life existed in your spirit? 20. It is necessary that you know that the spirit before incarnating has had a vast preparation, since it will remain put through a long and sometimes hard test. But thanks to that preparation he was not disturbed when entering this lifetime, closes his eyes to the past to open them to a new existence and thus, from the first moment he adapts to the world he has come to. How different is the way your spirit presents itself at the threshold of spiritual life or when he has just left his body in the world? As he has lacked true preparation to return to his home, then he is disturbed, the sensations of matter still dominate him and he does not know what to do or where to go, because he did not learn that it is also necessary to know how to close his eyes to this world at the last moment, because only then will he be able to open them to the spiritual world he had. left where all his past awaited him to unite it to your new experience and all your previous merits. Add the new merits. 21. A dense veil clouds his mind as he regains the light. A tenacious influence of all that he left prevents him to feel the vibration of your consciousness and as its shadows fade to rejoin your true essence. How much confusion, how much pain. 22. Who will there be, after hearing or reading this message, reject it as a useless or false lesson. I say to them that only he who finds himself in a degree of extreme materialism or blind fanaticism could reject this light without your spirit being moved. 23. At this time I do not come to reveal to man the past of his spirit, but yes to assure you that your spirit has lived, that he has come to carry out an elevated mission to earth and that he must return to his mansion, not only without stain, not even with the same light it brought, but with even more light. 24. Spirits that inhabit the earth. Feel my presence. Look at the divine light that is poured out on you. Many ways your father has to send you his sparkles and inspirations. But in addition to that, I send you this word that I have manifested through human understandings, so that it reaches you and you meditate on it. It is the manna of life in your desert, the dew of grace on the sterility of your existence. It is balm in your pain and infinite light in your darkness. 25. It is up to you, multitudes of listeners and witnesses of my manifestation, to prepare to send my divine messages to all mankind. 26. My infinite charity is ready to receive you all, the same to those who come tired and tearful, as to those who come near without true faith to listen to me, as one who comes eagerly as a good disciple, to offer me the fruit of its fulfillment. 27. I am the Father who seeks your spirit to fill it with light, because you live in a time of uncertainty and confusion. 28. I bring to humanity a teaching that leads it to carry out works of true charity, of spiritual and elevation, works by which men will be remembered, blessed and imitated by future generations. Only the trace of the works that contain truth will be imperishable in the world, because the hour of judgment is approaching in that all work that is not built on a foundation of truth, be destroyed and of it not a stone remains on stone. 29. I tell you, disciples, that if you want to leave seed in the hearts of your brothers, let it be with your works and examples, works clean of vanity. Always bear in mind that in order not to twist or mistake the path, you must be the humble servant and the obedient disciple of Christ, whose works are written in your conscience. 30. There are my present, eternal and indelible examples, despite so many storms and whirlwinds. 31. People, do you recognize that my word has freed you from human miseries at this time? Well, know that the same you will have to do with your brothers. Your heart tells me, Lord, you have given us gifts and graces. How could we do the same with our kindred? To which I answer, that if you cannot distribute gifts, grant thanks, if you can make your brothers, listening to my doctrine on your lips, feel the awakening of their gifts and powers and that, 
learning to communicate with their father, they receive by inspiration the mission that they have to play. Doesn't your mission seem big and worthwhile enough? 32. I must tell you, disciples, that if you are interested in your works having value before me, you will not have to ask for anything in exchange for them to your brothers. 33. The divine manna of the third era has descended on this people. How could you turn them from children of light into children of darkness, desecration and disobedience? How is it that having been appointed trustees of my revelations, could you become miserable beings on earth? 34. Watch and pray, I always tell you so that you do not fall into temptation, so that you do not hide your gifts from anyone, either out of fear or selfishness, understanding that in your saddlebag you carry many presents that do not belong to you, because I have given them to you to be deposited with your brothers. Know that no matter how much you have, if you give nothing, it is as if you have nothing. That is why many times I have claimed you that having received so much from me, you come and show me your hands empty, because they have given nothing, because they have not sown my word of love. 35. Truly I tell you, if you need an incentive to fulfill your mission, you carry out works of true charity, because in the practice of my teaching you will find encouragement and compensation. 36. Those who live waiting for charity from me and being able to do it on their path do not do it, they have not had charity from their brothers or themselves. Those are the ones who have let his heart cool, the ones who have turned off his lamp, the ones who resemble weak birds fallen from the nest, or the dry leaves that fall from the trees in autumn, to be carried aimlessly by the winds. 37. Do you put a defect in my communication by the fact that I give it to you through sinful creatures? They are certainly not pure beings. But tell me if my words through these human lips have not left in your heart some memory, or if on some occasion its sweetness did not remove the bitterness that you carried in your heart. 38. Man. Remember that you arrived with your wounded heart, with troubled mind and shattered spirit, and then from listening to me you got up strong. Who had done this with you? 39. Woman. You arrived with your eyes and heart tired of crying, and when you thought you had no more tears, you heard my word and your cheeks were again furrowed with tears, but now it was a cry of hope and tenderness. Who had reached the bottom of your heart before the day you heard my voice? 40. This doctrine has proved to you that it is not an empty word, but that it is saturated with divine essence, that is why it is simple in its form, because its depth and its meaning are in its essence. 41. Just as I have come to comfort you in your afflictions, I have also come to give you light in your spirit, because they have unleashed and removed all darkness in their depths, and you must know how to defend yourselves. 42. Light your lamp again, Awaken the love in your heart, be interested in eternal life and have charity of your spirit. Only in this way will you be able to feel pity towards your fellow men and consecrate part of your life to the practice of love. 43. Keep your treasure by sharing it and always making good use of what it holds. Then it will be born in you a strength, a health and a light that you have never experienced. That strength, that light, and that health will come from the spirit and will be reflected in the flesh. 44. People, you are no longer the walker who gropes for a light. You have already found it. 45. This word has done the miracle of resurrecting you to life. It has been the force that has lifted you up and has healed you. Who could convince you that it does not come from God, when you have experienced in your being a transformation only attributable to my power? 46. You have a beautiful opportunity to improve your life, to be able to be useful and to carve a worthy home for your spirit in the spirit mansion. Who can take this opportunity away from you? No one unless you forget to watch and pray and your negligence would make you fall into temptation. 47. If you want to be at peace when the great events announced by my teachings arise, stand firm in your steps. 48. You will see how the moment will come when the representatives of the great churches feel the presence of the divine and recognize the arrival of the new time. 49. You will see some of them deliberate, question each other and make proposals, even when at times their vanity makes them think they are superior to each other. 50. This time of struggle will be unforgettable for your spirit, 
because in it you manage to overcome materialism and give expansion to their faith, to love, to the desire to ascend to God on the path of spirituality. 51. The understanding and heart of the spiritualist will participate in the delight of their superior being and as long as they have life, they will collaborate with the spirit in the performance of their high mission. But when the time has come to rest in the womb of the earth, he will do it in peace, satisfied that he has occupied himself in the work of the Lord and the last thoughts, thus like the last heartbeats of that being, they will be indelibly etched in the spirit that inhabited an envelope humble, noble and docile to divine commands. 52. See why I tell you, transform your matter into a staff, into a support of the spirit here on earth, giving you to understand that you take from your flesh that scepter and that command with which it has tried to subdue the spirit, guided by consciousness, is the only rudder and light in man's life. 53. I have spoken to you according to your ability, because I do not want you to ignore the meaning of any of my words, although I also tell you that according to the preparation of each group, crowd, or congregation, this is the way I manifest. 54. Every spirit owes a great debt to its father. For my love towards you, I have offered on earth this new opportunity to justify yourselves before me, to restore spiritually and to purify yourselves so that you can proceed to the next abode. 55. Oh, blessed third era that you bring in your ark how much the world needs to save itself from its slavery. Blessed are those who take advantage of your light, for they will be saved. 56. Throughout your spiritual journey I have guided, tested and prepared you for the revelation of this era. It will not be men who organize the new people of Israel, it will be I who will form it, purify it, elevate and send him among humanity to fulfill his mission. Meanwhile, this town is growing and demolishing. Obstacles to pass. I did so with Israel when I brought it out of Egypt and led it through the sea and through the desert. 57. This people brings the mission of spiritually awakening humanity. More, when I have completed and men realize the time in which they live, you will see arise from their hearts a longing for light and from their spirit an ideal of elevation, which will shake human life to its roots and transform the world. 58. The conscience will be heard and obeyed. The calls of the spirit will be understood. The desires and right spiritual minds will be taken into account and respected. And everywhere the desire to know God, to to feel it, to approach him and to look at his truth. 58. The conscience will be heard and obeyed. The calls of the spirit will be understood. The desires and right spiritual minds will be taken into account and respected. And everywhere the desire to know God, to to feel it, to approach him and to look at his truth. 59. All this will arise in men when hunger and thirst have brought them to the limits of their resistance. When their pride has fallen, they confess repentant before their Lord. When they descend from their thrones and their seats, from where they have tried to ignore me, from where they have judged and denied me. For that, repenting of their mistakes, turn their eyes towards me and speak to me as children to a father who has been waiting for centuries and centuries to fill them with his love. 60. How far has man sunk into his materialism, coming to deny who has created everything? How could the human mind become so clouded? How could your science deny me and desecrate life and nature as it has done? 61. In each work that your science discovers is my presence. In each work my law is manifested and hear my voice. How is it that these men do not feel or see or hear? Is it a proof of advancement and civilization denying my existence, my love and my justice? 62. You are then no more advanced than primitive men, who knew how to discover in each element and in each wonder of nature, the work of a divine being superior, wise, just and powerful, to whom they attributed all good, everything existing and that is why they adored it. 63. Through a nascent intelligence they tried to understand what their bodily senses received, what perfect worship could they offer me? What full understanding could they have of the truth? Yet his amazement, his faith and his worship were received by me as the first fruits of a vast field that my spirit was to cultivate through the ages. 64. From then until now, how many lessons have I given humanity? How many revelations have entrusted my love? 
However, when these men should have reached the summit of understanding and when his worship should be perfect, is when his selfish, arrogant and inhuman science has risen to deny myself and when the cults that exist live in the lethargy of routine and traditions. 65. I gave you the gift of free will and I have respected that blessed freedom granted to my children. But I also put in your being the divine light of consciousness so that, guided by it, you would channel your gifts and I tell you, that in the struggle of spirit and matter the spirit has suffered a defeat, a painful fall, which little by little it has been moving further and further away from the source of the truth that I am. 66. His defeat is not final, it is temporary, because from the bottom of his abyss he will rise when his hunger, his thirst, his nakedness and his darkness cannot bear them anymore. Pain will be your salvation and hearing the voice of your consciousness will rise strong and luminous, fervent and inspired, taking again its gifts, but no longer with that freedom to apply them to good or evil, but consecrating them only to the fulfillment of divine laws, which is the best worship you can offer to my spirit. My peace be with you.